Welcome back friends. Yesterday I floated the idea of doing a new video series called How Hard Can It Be, right? A lot of guys uh, kind of equated it to, uh, was it the Mike Rowe show of Dirty Jobs? I, I haven't seen that. I know who he, who he is. I, I remember seeing some of the advertisements, but we haven't had TV for 10 years, so I haven't seen any of those shows. But yeah, maybe not, maybe something not unlike that. But the, the first thing that we're going to do, the first suggestion that um, really piqued my, my uh, intrigued me, I guess, is from Lagland Deo. I apologize if I butchered your name. He says, how hard can it be uh, to dig a well? Well, it just so happens that's something that has been on my mind that I was actually going to start doing this spring. And believe it or not, I actually have a hydro drill. <laughs> this was this was left here uh, by a friend of mine and if I look on the, there's a sticker on there that says uh, drill parts drill parts or well drill parts $125 and that's what he paid for it I'm assuming at the garage sale or that was the asking price so what I have I have no idea what I have I have a whole I've got the power head does it run I've got a whole like three boxes of, um, of bit extensions I've got a box full of bits here's one of them got a hole in the center uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff and I don't know if it's complete I don't even know if this thing will run so the, the I guess the question that we have to ask about these the series is is do you want to have a uh, daily videos you know maybe it takes all day to get the engine running on the on the hydro drill speaking of which yeah, it says hydro hydra h-y-d-r-a drill if someone could look up and see if the company still exists I, it'd be kind of and let me know in the comments it'd be nice to know if if we could even get parts for this thing if we're missing something because it looks kind of complicated. I mean, it's got a, it's got a transmission on the bottom of it uh, that rotates. It's got some sort of a locking ring. Obviously, it's got an input for a garden hose. I mean, I really have no, no idea where to start. Uh, so, should we do this? Should I like film all week and do one like full, complete, comprehensive video, or should we do the daily struggles and just share those in 10, 15, 20 minute increments? That's what we'll have to have to decide. But what my reference is going to be for this series uh, is uh, the Back to Basic book uh, that was published by Reader's Digest. I mean, it's been reprinted so many times. This needs to be the first book in your library. Uh, it, what it does is it, is it shows you how to do all these things uh, that we've forgotten um, because of modern conveniences. I mean, how to build a sweat lodge. I mean, how to dig a well, how to build a foundation, how to can food, how to tan, tan leather, cut steaks, cut meat. All of that stuff is in here, and it's not super detailed. It's kind of a just a brief, brief topo of the topic, at least kind of get you pointed in the right direction. But if memory serves, if we turn to the index here and we look up well, www, page 45, it gives us some guidelines, some basic guidelines to get started. So let's take a look at what the book has to say, and we'll see, see what we can do. I hope you can see this, but the back, to, the back to Basics book covers, we've got two pages dedicated to wells. So we see a couple different styles here. So we see a, a hand dug well uh, using a corrugated pipe as a casing. Now, if you don't know with wells, uh, the biggest, one of the biggest issues, as far as I understand, is you don't want surface water contaminating the well, uh, that, contaminating the water that's down in the aquifer. And so that's why they would put some, something around there that would seal that. Let's say, for example, you had an animal, you know, animal droppings here that, that can, you know, make people sick. If that were to be, you know, right by the entrance and the rain would come and the, all of that, those, um, what do you call, what do you call them? <laughs> bugs all the bad bugs get down in your water it can make you sick so that's why they do that uh here we have a brick a stone lined or no brick lined one here we have kind of a dipping one way to dip uh, uh for a deep well this is interesting my granddad told me well let me back this up a little bit so my granddad told me about back in the day so of course they grew up uh they got their land in the oklahoma land rush and they and they had i think it was 80 acres in oklahoma uh when he was like third generation when when he when he was born there i believe they've been there a long time uh anyway so he told me about that they had to dig their own well uh, and that they're actually where they needed the well was at the bottom of kind of you know how the prairies how rolly they are um and he said, I, I can't remember the numbers, and it's going to be exaggerated because that's what we tend to do because it makes stories more interesting. But I'm thinking it was something like between 150 and 250 feet deep. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine digging a hole that deep and then lining it with bricks, how long that would take? 
He said they were they were weeks, if not months, doing that, uh, taking turns and then have you know pulling the dirt out with a bucket. He said he had a neighbor that had a place up on top of a hill. They had to go twice as deep, whatever that was. You know, the reality of it was they probably went down 80 feet. But uh, you know how you build it up in your mind over time. So that was one way of doing it. And I'll give you just another story just to demonstrate how hard old granddad was. So when he got out of the war in World War II, he was able to borrow some money with the GI loan. Uh, and him and his brother, who had also been, he was actually in Patton's Third Army, I believe, his brother Speed, they had come back and they had went to an auction, I believe, uh, and they'd purchased an old government building. It was a wood frame building uh, at an auction. And so what they did is that these boys dismantled this building, took it apart. They saved the nails, they saved the door casings, they saved the cabinets. I think they saved everything. Uh, the siding, the windows, the glass, all that, use, the, use this material from the salvage auction building and built them both house. I think they built my granddad's first and then they built uh, uh, Speed's second. And that's the very house that my dad lives in today. My dad was a hard guy too. He was working a full-time job and he took that little tiny house that granddad built, which was, I mean, I'm guessing must have been probably close to around a thousand feet or so. It wasn't big, uh, into like a 5,000 foot duplex wall my dad did everything. You know, he framed it, he roofed it. He even cut every individual piece of glass for the single pane windows. I mean, it was, I can't even imagine. Uh, I mean, you know, you th I, I complain about my workload. I mean, that's just tremendous. Uh, so guys, we're hard. We're, we're hard. And, and as my dad always says, it's amazing what you can do uh, if you have to. You know, he had to, ha had to have this house and he, and he made it happen. So that's kind of the, <clears throat> the impetus or the, or the start behind the series. So let's go back to the book really quick and look at our method for dig well digging. Now over here on page 55, we see a couple different methods. We see the T-handle method. See, he's got his well pipe extensions there. Well, that'd make a man heavy, all right? We've got uh, the drive hammer, the trip hammer that falls down and takes a chunk, kind of like a post hole digger. Um, we've got using pres pressurized water. And then look at this, a gasoline engine hydraulic swivel. So we've got right there is what the system that we have, right? I was flipping beyond just to look a little bit, and this I think is where we need to start. And this is something that we should probably be a standalone video on its own, the secrets to water dowsing. Do you know what water dowsing is? I'll tell you the first time I saw it. The very first time I saw water dowsing, I was working for an excavating contractor and we had this big job and we were putting the subdivision in and there was an old buried water main somewhere running through that property. But the maps that had shown, the plot maps that had shown the, a recent, or the original location had been lost or something happened and no one knew where it was at. And if we were to dig through this and to damage it, it, would, it, it could cut water off for hours for an entire neighborhood, right? So it was really important. So the guy I was working for, I don't know where he dug this old codger up, but he dug this guy up uh, who came out and claimed to be a water dowser. Now a water dowser, <clears throat> from how I understand it, and watching him, he had a couple of what looked like brass rods belt, bent into a 90 degree shape like this. And a water dowser, some of them claim, uh, according to the book here, uh, to be able to to find uh, minerals, uh, water deposits, to find even um, missing bodies. They've been called in for this. So I've always grew up you know, wondering about this. I've always thought it was witchcraft or something very strange. I remember when that old geezer came out uh, that was dowsing for that water line, the guy I was working with was Catholic and I saw him discreetly cross himself. You know, <laughs> I'm like, I don't, is this, is this uh, where does this power come from? Because as the guy in the book said, the key to it is you've got to believe. You got to believe. You know what does that mean? I mean, do, do I believe that this will work? Do we use? So here's how it's supposed to work. So as you go out uh, and you, if you come across the line and you've got the right vibrations and the right mindset, the sticks will actually cross on their own and point to a water and mineral deposit. I don't know, man. I mean, it seems weird to me. All I know is that that guy came out and his sticks, his deals crossed when we dug down there and we found the water line. Would we have found it otherwise? I just don't know. I don't know. So that's probably where we need to start is the water dowsing. I'm going to have to work on my belief because I, I am a little bit skeptical and a little bit, uh, I, I just don't know. 
<laughs> I just don't know. Let's take, the, take, let's take a look at the engine really quick of our pump. Um, I might not have enough material to even do this and the whole project may end up mis miscarrying anyway, uh, but we've got to just step it off. So I think we'll start with the water dowsing uh, and let's take a quick look at the engine. I think it's important to make sure that that thing even runs before we get too carried away. So let's, let's jump over the bench. Okay, let's see what we got here. So what we have, check this out, it's a Tecumseh. Man, that was a that was a good one back in the day. That I think that was an American-made one. We've got our fuel ratio, so it tells us that it's a 24 to one mix. So th what that tells us is that it's a four-stroke or two-stroke. Excuse me, two-stroke. So we have a single-cylinder two-stroke. There we have the spark plug, uh, the muffler, and then some sort of a transmission uh, here. You know it. That's got to be uh, to to aid or to get the thing unstuck. You probably put a bar in there. Again, here's a throttle. That's supposed to bolt to something. Probably just missing the clamp. It was probably bolted onto the handle. My main concern is was it stored with fuel in it? So we might have a video on how hard is it to get an old two-stroke engine running? Because this thing doesn't look well used, but it does look old. Oh, it's got a flywheel and it's got a clutch, a spring clutch system there. It's pretty pretty sophisticated actually so my as my big concern is was there gasoline left in it I mean that is the thing there's guys that make a good living uh, as side jobs going to garage sales to the suburbs and buying a lawn equipment mowers and things that don't no longer work um, and then taking them home cleaning out the uh, carburetor get them going and selling them for five times what they paid for them ten times um, that's a great a great little business I have some serious concerns when I looked in here I saw this is not good at all. There was some sort of a sponge material in the tank. They shouldn't have done that. There it is, look at that. And it's all broken down and it's just turning into just basically powder. Um, the inside of the tank looks clean. I don't see any varnish in there, but it's gonna have to come out and every single bit of this is gonna have to be, is gonna have to be take it out. I think we should even uh, put a, a really small passive uh, filter, fuel filter on that as well and take the carburetor off. Oh, I don't know. There, what's this? This is probably the, that's the choke. Yep, there's the choke and we've got off and on. So that is going to be uh, a video getting that running. So let's, uh, well, let's make a plan here and come up and attack this thing logically. Okay, so let's come up with our plan. So as you see, we took a poll and the, the great majority of you uh, thought that the classic pearl uh, glass chains would be uh, best. So, so that's what I ordered, six bucks on Amazon, affiliate link below if you'd like to get one for yourself. So how are we gonna look at this, this project um, and how, how are, we, are we going to see it through? So the way I'm kind of, we're gonna kind of look at it is from the perspective of, let's say EMP, uh, electromagnetic pulse has basically cut you off uh, from your um, f from supplies, uh, from town, from, from, you know, maybe, I, yeah, I don't know. It, we're not going to adhere to it super hardcore, but what I'm thinking is that when we take on these projects, whether it be, uh, and there were some great ones, there were cut your own hair, you know, replacing a zipper, zipper, making your own clothing, making your own pants, um, cooking, you know, lots of interesting different things. But what I'd like to do in the series is is try to utilize the things that we have around the house to duplicate these. It won't always be the case, but I think for the survival type of stuff, like drilling a well, how important is that? If you're relying, right, relying upon for your water on pressurized pipes that are coming from the water treatment plant, uh, when the power goes out, all that's gone. And once your hot water heater's drained, you know, that's 50 gallons, you don't have much. And you're not gonna live very long without that. So water's a really important one. How cool would it be if this worked out to have a hand crank well in the front yard uh, that you could, you know, I think that would be fabulous. So there is that. Um, so I'd like to try to use what I have and you know, we may have to bring in parts and stuff. It's just an idea. The other thing is, is it should be a daily video. Should it be the daily struggles with you know, we go from trying to do the water witching to the getting the engine going to laying out and picking which drill bit and all that stuff. And it's going to be challenging doing this when it's so cold because I know there's going to be water involved to keep everything from freezing uh, is going to be a problem as well. So, uh, yeah, so that'll be that's kind of what I'm thinking. So let me know in the comments if um, if you would like to see the the daily or just save everything up and just do a one 
once a week episode. We could do that too, but there just wouldn't be as many videos. Uh, anyway, I think that that's, I think that's going to be interesting. All right. So let's, uh, let's try water witching will be the next one. And then we'll dig into that engine and see if we can get that going. So what else did I want to talk about? I can't think of anything. If you'd like to order this book, I will too put an Amazon affiliate link um, and put that up in the subject heading as well as I'll pin it to the front comment. Uh, this is a great book. I don't think they cost very much. You can, I've been buying them. I bought them used off of eBay and um, I think there's even some used ones on Amazon. Um, 10 bucks, maybe 15 bucks. This is a great gift. We've given these to gifts to a lot of our friends and everybody enjoys this good coffee table. Coffee table book can kind of get you thinking in the right direction and reminder of how far how many skills that we've lost. All right, let me know in the comments again what you'd like to see uh, in these videos, uh, what you'd like to see, how hard can it be, and I'll read through all of those and we'll start kind of putting them together and get a list and start working towards that. But I think the well drilling one's gonna be pretty interesting. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.